It won't always be like this. song. God bless you, streams of mercy. God bless you guys. What a prophetic song. Uh, say to yourself, it's turning around for me. It's one thing you have to learn to say in this year over and over again because it will turn. The devil does not have a choice. God will turn it and it will turn in the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't you welcome your neighbor? Say you're welcome to the first Sunday service of the year 2024. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. And it's an impartation service. I believe God has something for you as a person. And that God will bless you indeed in Jesus' name. Um, I want to quickly say this before we go on. By the grace of God, every year we wait on the Lord in the month of January. We take time out to fast and to pray. And this year is no different. And we're going to be, in, we're going to be engaging in a 21 days fast by the grace of God, starting from Thursday the 11th. Did I hear somebody say yeah? yeah. Yes. <laughs> I hope that yeah means yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want you all to please prepare your hearts and your minds and believe God that this year your fasting and your praying will turn things around for you. Praise the Lord. I believe strongly in my heart that like Jesus said in Matthew 17, 21, he said, this kind goeth out not except by prayer and by fasting. I know that there are certain things that will not shift except we take our stand and we refuse to give up and we stand strong in God and believe God for the best. And this year, I believe you will have your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll be meeting every evening apart from Saturday and Sunday. So so please take note, we'll meet on Thursday, the first one on Zoom, and then we'll meet on Friday also on Zoom. Time is 7 p.m. every Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. So we're going to start this Thursday, and then Friday, and then we'll now start again on Monday, 7 p.m. So please take note, it's 7 to 8, one hour of solid intercession. I believe by the end of January, something should have turned and something would have turned in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want you to prepare yourself for these 21 days of a serious spiritual adventure and um, expect to receive your tangible testimonies of a turnaround indeed. The Lord bless you and the Lord strengthen you Amen. as you partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go straight to the Word of God. Um, I want you to open your Bibles with me to Psalm 45. Psalm 45, and I'm going to read verse 6 to 9. Then Isaiah chapter 10, and I read verse 27. Psalm 45, 6 to 9. And then Isaiah chapter 10, and I read verse 27. Psalm 45, first of all, I read. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cashier out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee God. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold and offer. Now go to Isaiah chapter 10, and I'll read verse 27. Isaiah 10 verse 27. Isaiah 10 verse 27, and I read. And it shall come to pass in that day, that this burden shall be taken away off thy shoulder, and its yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the, everybody shout that last word there, 
anointing. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Say with me, maximizing. maximizing. Oh, loud I say maximizing. The impact of the anointing. Again, maximizing the impact of the anointing. Shall we pray? Father, thank you once again for a time like this. Thank you for grace. Thank you for glory. Thank you for supernatural enablement to discharge our spiritual responsibilities. Thank you for the presence that makes the difference. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit that is here. Lord, receive our thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we commit this aspect of the service to you. Know you fully well. It's, it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, say of the Lord. Yes, Lord. That which our power cannot do, that which our might cannot achieve. Lord, we ask that by your spirit, you will achieve them in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, I ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will impart your people for this year, 2024. Let, at the end of the day, let our testimony be that we have met with you and our lives have been preserved. Amen. We give you praise and we give you glory for in Jesus' mighty, precious name we have prayed. Amen. Any child of God here that knows Jesus shall be bigger. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, look at your say neighbor. Say, God, we bless you. And you will live to remember it. For many, many years to come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Now, quickly, I want us to read again Psalm 45, very importantly. Because it is so vital that we get this. Psalm 45. Because I'm going to be speaking from there. From verse 6 to 9. Thy throne, O God, is for how many years, please? It's forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God thy God had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and lost and cast thee out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Avra. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Now, one of the divine instruments that God uses and I've seen it being used in the Bible. I've seen it being used in the lives of people physically. One of the divine instruments that God uses to turn things around in people's lives is the anointing. In other words, whenever you come in contact with God's anointing, I'm not talking about feeling. I'm not talking about goosebumps. I'm not talking about somebody pushing you. I'm talking about a genuine encounter with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Whenever you come in contact with that anointing, things do turn around or will turn around in your life. God's word tells us this very clearly, that the anointing is a game changer. When the anointing comes into play in your situation, no matter how deadly your situation may be, no matter how discouraging your circumstance or circumstances may be, you will, re you will realize that everything about that situation will change. The anointing has a way of forcing a change in any situation. And when we are talking about the anointing, we are talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. We are talking about the, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. So whenever the Holy Spirit is in a place, that's what we see that will happen there. God's word tells us in Luke chapter 4, if you read verse 14, it says that the power of God, that, the, that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. In other words, Jesus, if you look at Luke chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says he, um, he was filled with, he was full of the Holy Ghost, then he went to the wilderness, but in verse 14, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. Now the power of the Spirit, the moment he returned in that power, something happened to his fame. Something happened to him as a person. Something happened to his name. The scripture tells us in the big part, look at that. He said, and his fa the fame of him, he said, went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So you could see there that something happened to the life of Jesus when he returned in the power of the spirit. Because the power of the spirit is the anointing. Micah chapter 3 verse 8, Micah was speaking. He said, I am full of power and might by the Spirit of the Lord. My prayer is that today at the end of this service, you will be full of the power of the Spirit of God. Yeah. The anointing will rest on you for a change in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
One man of God said something about the anointing that I wrote down. I want you to please listen to it. He said, the anointing is not a feeling. It is a force. Nothing gets done without it. It provides solutions to every human problem, no matter its intensity or long history. In other words, when the anointing comes into play, it provides solution to problems. So today, you are going on with the anointing for solution. Amen. Whatever it may be, whatever it is that is troubling you, as you are anointed today, may God cause that anointing to change the story that you are telling about that thing. Amen. May God turn it around for good for you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The moment the anointing comes to play, things change. That's why Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 24, if you read verse 49, he said, please make sure that you do not depart from Jerusalem until you are in deal with power from on high. Because he knew that without the power from on high, there is very little that they can achieve. So today, I pray for you. May the power from on high be part and parcel of your affairs throughout this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. As hands are laid on you, may the anointing rest on you. Amen. The anointing that brings change, the anointing that brings joy, is causing the oil of gladness, the anointing that brings manifestation of the blessings of God. May he find a place for expression in somebody this life under the sound of my voice Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why you see Zachariah, God speaking through him in Zachariah 4 verse 6 to verse 7. He says, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, say the Lord. What to do what? Verse 7. Who art thou mountain? Hey, somebody shout mountain. mountain. Oh, I didn't hear you very well. Shout mountain. mountain. He said, who art thou mountain before Zerubbabel? He said, for you shall be made what? Low. Today, whatever it is, whether it's a mountain whether it's a heel, whatever is whatever kind of state or, or stature or posture that your opposition has, by the release of God's anointing this morning, we will level it in the name of Jesus. Hey. You will walk over what has been walking over you. You will rise above what has been above you. You will have joy over what has been giving you sadness. If you believe that, raise your right and say, I receive the anointing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, quickly, I've got to get to somewhere because I want to have time to be able to pray for you. Now, listen very carefully. The effects of the anointing. The effects of the anointing. Number one, look at this. The first effect of the anointing that I saw, is, I've seen in scripture and in the lives of people, is that the anointing destroys the works of evil. The works of evil. The works of evil. The word of God tells us where we read in Isaiah 10, 27. It says that by the reason of the anointing, yokes are destroyed. Yokes are not destroyed because you are well educated. Yokes are not destroyed because you have a certificate. Amen. Yokes are not destroyed because you have some kind of connections. The real power that destroys yokes is the anointing. He said it is by the anointing that yokes submit themselves to destruction. It's by the anointing that yokes are dismembered. Whether it's a yoke of disease, or it's a yoke of career, or your career, or it's a yoke of or your marriage, your relationship, your children. By the reason of the anointing today, it shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why you see Jesus speaking in Luke 4 verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. The anointing will heal your, bro will heal your broken heart this morning. He said then to preach deliverances. That's where I'm going. To preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Everywhere Jesus went, you see the anointing making the difference, destroying the works of evil. In Acts 10, 38, the Bible says, How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all of them that were oppressed of the devil. Wherever the works of evil is present in your life, I am standing as a servant of God. And as you are anointed today, every work of evil, I serve them a quick notice. Amen. The anointing will remove or uproot. The anointing will display this member. The anointing will destroy, break them into pieces in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, the anointing. That's what makes the difference. It destroyed the works of what? Of evil. Number two, quickly, because I want to get some somewhere. Number two, another effect of the anointing, which I've seen, which I want to share with you today is this. The anointing causes you to stand out. He causes you to stand out in Psalm 45, verse 7. Psalm 45, verse 7, our text. It says, Thou lovest righteousness and entest 
wickedness. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above. I like the word above there. Somebody shout above. above. He said above thy fellows. He said you are anointed above. One particular translation. The New English translation of the Bible. It says you love justice and hate evil. For this reason, God your God has anointed you with the oil of joy, elevating you above your companions. So when you are anointed, you stand in the class of your home. You are outstanding because you are standing out. You stand in a place where others can listen. When you are anointed, there's no need, there's no room for competition. When you are anointed, there's no room for struggle. Because the anointed just causes you to stand out. When David was anointed in 1 Samuel 17, the Bible tells me the moment he showed up on the battlefield, there was something about him that made him to stand out. Mm. Everybody else was saying the same thing, but David was saying something different. Mm. I don't know about you, but listen to me very carefully. But something will be different about your life from today. Amen. Listen, wherever you have been before, mm. and you have always been the same, mm. as you go there this week, as you go there next week, yes, as you step into it this month, yes, I pray like David stood out, you will stand out. Amen. Something will rest upon you today Amen. that will cause them to say there's something different about Amen. you. Your story will change because your life will change. Amen. The anointing will make a difference in your life. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five say, I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. He said he has anointed you above. Somebody say above. Above. Because you become different. The anointing, the real anointing, I'm not talking about feeling. I'm not talking about falling down. No. When you when you encounter God's anointing and it's on you, in first Samuel chapter 10, one man was anointed. Before he was anointed, he was like everybody else. Before he was anointed, he was like anybody else. Before he was anointed, there was no difference between him and his brothers, no difference between him and other people in his lineage. But the moment he was anointed, his name is Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6, Samuel said, and when the, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, he said that you will be turned into another man. Listen, there is another man in you that the world has not seen yet. The anointing has a way of bringing it out. That glorious thing in you, that glorious potential in you, that glorious gift in you, by the anointing today, it shall be released. You will be turned into another man. You will stand for good. Oh, my, my, my. The Bible says by the anointed soul, an ordinary man was turned into another man. Now, let me say this to you. I, I, I've made mention of it earlier on, but let me just say this again for you to understand. You see, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible said, Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned to Jordan. Are you hearing me? All of us are full of the Holy Ghost. No big deal about that. Amen. You are full of the Holy Ghost. But the scriptures now say in verse 14, listen, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. He went in, it will be full of the Holy Ghost, but he came down what? With the power. Being full of the Holy Ghost is the power of God in you. Having the power of the Spirit is the power of God on you. You need to have both the power of God in you and the power of God on you. The power of God in you is the Holy Spirit inside you. The power of God on you is the anointing. Mm. Now, you need to understand that. If you go to Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, but was that the only thing? No. Then with power. That power is the anointing. Mm. The Holy Ghost is for your making, mm. for help your character, help your Christian work. Are you hearing me? Mm. But the anointing is for display. Oh, you missed that. <laughs> the anointing is for manifestation of glory. The anointing is when you get somewhere, you lay hands on something, and that thing just yields to whatever you are saying. The anointing is when you speak to the atmosphere, it is turning around for me. And then the moon will begin to dance to your tune. Then the stars, oh, you missed that. I said the stars will begin to dance to your tune. Then the angels begin to go in your direction. Because what? The anointing is on your life. That was what made David stand stood out. And he looked at Goliath. He said, today, I will end your life. Yes. Today, we will end the life of your opposition. Yes. 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 I'm getting you today. I'm getting you today. Before now, you have been announcing yourself. I want, you, I want to welcome you to the realm where the anointing announces you. Amen. <laughs> will somebody here hear me? You will be announced this month. Amen. Your name will be 
announced this month. Amen. If you're online, hear me, you'll be announced this month. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, his fame went abroad. He, he did not print and build. He did not print flyer. His fame went abroad. What was that? That is the power of the Spirit. Your businesses, your career, your position will be announced by the anointing. Give somebody a high five. Say, I receive it. Don't say that. I say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Before the anointing, the people didn't know him much. When you read Luke chapter 4, you see Jesus there. The Bible says in verse 16 of Luke 4, he came into the synagogue as his custom was. So he's been coming before then. But on this particular day, something happened. The anointing is not resting on him. Are you hearing me? He has returned in the power of what? Of the spirit. So look at verse 18. Look at verse 18. The Bible says there, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he's not just full of the Holy Ghost now. It's not what? Power has come upon him. Because he has anointed me. You see that? He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had, he said, he had sent me to what? To heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverances to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set the liberty in them that are bruised. Now, if you go to verse 20, listen to this. In verse 20, the Bible now says, the eyes of all, Someone said the eyes of all. If you read from the beginning, he said, and he closed the book. Remember, the Bible said he came as his custom was. So he's been coming to church. Hmm. Follow me. You have been doing that same business, I know. You have been doing that same work. You've been going to that same office, I know, before now. He came as his custom was. So he's been coming, but nothing has been different about him. But on this day, he returned in the power of the Spirit. He now declared it. The anointing is on me. The Bible said the first thing that happened. At that moment, he stood out. How did I know? Look at the people. And the Bible said he closed the book and gave it to the minister and sat down. And then the eyes of how many people, please? No, shout it like you mean it. Shout it one more time. He said the eyes of what? All that were in the synagogue were doing what? Recognition, hey. attention. Hey. Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. By the anointing, they will see you. Amen. Where they have overlooked hey. you, they will see you. Amen. Where they have rejected you, they will ask for you again. Amen. Where they have come you down, they will embrace you. Amen. Somebody say, All eyes All shall be fasting on me. Fasting on me. Give somebody a high five. Say, I believe it. I believe it. He, he stood out. For the first time, he's been coming before. He came as his custom was. Mm. He's been coming before. Nobody ever noticed him. Nobody ever cares. Nobody apart from the fact that they knew that he was the son of Mary, brother is here, James, and all of that. But they never took any time to give attention to him. But now the story is different. Yeah. Because something is resting on him. Mm. Now, something, that something is the anointing. Yeah. And because of the anointing, they could not take their eyes off him. Mm -hmm. You are returning home today with grace and glory, Amen. with the power of the Spirit. Amen. That any day, any time, anywhere you go, they will not be able to take their eyes away from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It causes us to stand out. Yes, the apostles were ordinary fishermen until they were anointed. The moment they were filled with the Holy Ghost and anointed in Acts chapter 2, the Bible said, they, everybody, the Bible said, and the people gave here to their words. The days of being neglected are over. Amen. The days of being overlooked are now over. Amen. You will stand out. Amen. He anointed them. He said, he anointed you with what? Oil of gladness above your fellow brethren. Number two, go with me. Are you with me? Yes, sir. All right. Number two, number three, number three, number three, effect of the anointing. He said in Psalm 45 verse 8, we'll see it there. But let me give it to you. The anointing introduces sweet fragrance into your life. The anointing introduces or brings sweet fragrance into your life. Into your life as a person. Look at Psalm 45 verse 8. Because he has been anointed in verse 7. Remember that one? He has anointed with the oil of gladness. Look at verse 8. Oh, someone say, how many, please? Oh. All thy garments. <laughs> now smell of what? Man. 
Is that not what they brought to Jesus in those days when he was born of the things they brought to him? Remember gold, frankincense, and what? And man. These are spices. These are perfumes. Are you hearing me? He said, all thy garments now smell of man and alos and cashier out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Now, let me say this to you. Whether you know it or not, hear this today. Every one of us carry around with us certain degree of spiritual fragrance. Mm -hmm. That's why you will realize there are some people nobody wants to hang around. There are some people nobody desire. And there are certain people that certain people desire. They want to be with. There is something around you that repels people. And there's something about you that can attract people. Fragrance naturally, if you are smelling well, people hang around you. Spiritual fragrance is important. And the scripture said the anointing makes you to smell it with spices. Many years ago, my wife and I, we had an opportunity of traveling to Israel. And we went to these particular spices. I mean, a shop where they spell spices. Listen, when I saw that, that day, I saw spices. All manner, and you could you could smell the aroma. He was mixed of many things. He was so good. We wanted to stay in the store because of the fragrance. When you go into a place and you have a very bad body odor, people naturally don't have to pray the Holy Ghost. They just say, "We'll see you later." Why? Because the the odor, the aroma, the fragrance coming from your body is repelling them. Fragrance is, I mean, fragrance attracts. Bad odor repel. The anointing introduced some degree of sweet fragrance Amen. to you that wherever you go, they will say, we want you. Amen. Listen, there will be no place for competition any longer. Amen. Wherever you go, you will be preferred. Amen. Where others are referred. Amen. I said you will be preferred. Amen. Where others are referred. Amen. May that sweet fragrance follow your CV everywhere. Amen. May that sweet fragrance follow your children everywhere. Amen. Application everywhere. May that sweet fragrance follow your proposition everywhere. May that sweet fragrance follow your business everywhere. May that sweet fragrance follow you everywhere. May that sweet fragrance follow your effort everywhere. May that sweet fragrance follow your work everywhere. May that sweet fragrance follow your businesses everywhere. May it follow your ministry everywhere. In the name of Jesus. Someone says sweet fragrance. Sweet fragrance. When the anointing oil was first prepared in the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what the Bible says, how it should be done. Listen to this. Exodus 25, verse 6. He says there, he said, oil, he said, bring oil, tell people to bring oil for the light, then spices, someone says spices, spices. For, the, for anointing oil and for sweet incense. Mm. Listen, the anointing oil has spices in it. Yeah. The real anointing also has what? Spices, fragrance, so that wherever you turn to, every eye that is fasting on you, we want to do business with him. Amen. They will say, we don't know how to explain it. They don't have to explain it. They will just say, there's just something. Somebody say, there's just something. There's just something. I was somewhere recently with someone, and then they looked at the person, they said to the person, we don't know why, but you are different. Mm. They will look at you, and you, they will say, you are what? Different. I went to a place some time ago with my wife. And there were other people that were trying to get the same thing. But the moment we get there, when we met the people that hold the thing, you know what they said to us? They said, others have come. But the moment we see you step out of your car, the two of you, we just decided it's you that we have it. Mm. We've not even spoken. Ah, that's a kayada. Hear me? This year is not the year of labor. It's the year of favor. Yeah. Are you hearing me? labor unnecessarily. Yes, you will do the normal work, yes, sir. Mm. but you will not go into labor. Yes, Are you hearing me? That is unnecessary labor. Yes, unnecessary work. Yes, because favor will attend to you. Yes, there will be something about you. You see, when God gives you his anointing, mm. when God gives you his power, mm. they will look at everybody at work, but they will bypass them to reach you. Amen. Your color will not speak against you. Amen. Your education will not stand against you. Amen. Somebody say, I am anointed. Give somebody a high five. Say, I receive that fragrance. Spices for the anointing oil. Spices. Someone say spices. Spices. And he says spices. Spices. 
You see in Psalm 15, Psalm 45, verse 11, the same Psalm that we we're just reading. Look at how the Bible is describing this same person that was anointed. He said, So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Mm. For he is, listen, I, 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 I don't know who I'm talking to, but I just feel there's somebody here that needs to be helped. Mm. And you need to be helped greatly. Mm. So that wherever you go from henceforth, you will not have to struggle with others to be noticed. Amen. You will not have to put others down to stand up. Amen. You will not have to destroy somebody for you to be made. Amen. No. It will be that the anointed itself will be speaking for you. Amen. Your friend will go abroad. Amen. All the regions. Are you hearing me? Amen. From today, not only will you only have one option, you have options. Amen. The anointed. Someone said the anointed. The anointed. The spices. Something, something wonderful, something glorious, the fragrance. When the anointing came upon David in 1 Samuel 16, look, look at what happened. He was desired. Mm -hmm. They noticed him. That fragrance caused him to be noticed. 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. I read verse 13 first, then I read 17 to 18. 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. The spirit of the Lord came upon. You see that? It's a spirit upon. David, from that day forward. So from this day forward, amen. January the 7th, 2024, the anointing is coming upon someone that will say amen now. He said, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah and Saul said unto his servant, listen to this, Saul sent unto his servant, provide me now they are looking for someone. He said to his servant, he said in verse 17, Saul said to his servant, provide me now. Someone said now. Now. There's an urgency that's about to arise for you. Hey, urgent need. Someone say urgent need. Urgent need. You are here. Before you get up, they will call you. Amen. Someone say urgent need. Urgent need. He said, Pro there's a need in the palace. Hey. And that need is urgent. Provide me when now mm -hmm. I am here to announce this is your now. He said, Provide me now. Let's go on. A man that can play well and bring him to me because Saul was having problem. Now he needs a man, but he was not in an ordinary man. He wanted a man that can play well. Sometimes playing well is not enough. Okay, you missed that. Sometimes Skill is not enough. Yes, the battle is not for the strong. That's right. Are you hearing me? Yes, it's not for the skillful men. Are you hearing me? Yes, Are you with me, somebody here? Yes, sir. You need to understand that there is something that makes a difference between skillful men. Mm. It is called the anointing. That's right. Twelve men gathered their rods in the, in the, in the tabernacle. Mm. And then Aaron brought his own rod. Hey. Now remember the Bible said, let no man take this honor upon himself. Yes, except he is called like Aaron was called. That is a definite call, a distinguished call, a distinctive call, an original call, a tangible call, a call that cannot be denied. That was what upon, was upon Aaron. Because God called Aaron to be an high priest. But others are now competing with Aaron. They feel that you have a rod, I have a rod. You have beard, I have beard. You can speak English, I can speak English. You can talk, I can talk. You are an orator, I'm an orator. You have a present, I have present. You have job, I have job. You have Cambridge certificate, I have Oxford certificate. And all of that. But you see, when we bring it all together, the time they came back the next day, the rod of Aaron. I know it is all rods. They are all rods, rather. I know it's all certificates. I know it is all skills. I know it is all trainings. But somebody rod budded. Who was that person? The anointed one. From today, may your rod bud in the midst of other rods. There could be others doing the same thing you are doing, but this anointing will cause your rod to bud. Is there somebody receiving this here in this place? Shout a big hallelujah! Your rod will bud. I've been in places where I've been relegated to nobody. When I got there, they put me at the back. I sat down. I don't. I, I always said, I don't care where I sit. I just sit there. I sat there rather. But when they now encountered trouble and they could not solve it, and they said, "Let's call that man at the back," and they called me. I did not struggle. Right there, the Holy Ghost gave me wisdom what to do. When they did what I 
his hair. From that day, they never navigated me again. The next time I went there, they said, sit if I said, no, I will rather sit at the back. Don't make me, don't, don't make me to not stand like in the front. Amen. Amen. What am I trying to say to you here? That your rod we bought. Amen. Okay, you miss it there. Let me talk to them here. Your rod we bought. Amen. Among other Lord, this year, somebody raise up your lights as if you are raising the rod. Say, my rod we bought. Give somebody a high five. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it's not about knowing how to play well. Many people can play well. Many people can preach well. Many people can dance well. Many people can sing well. But what causes you to stand out is the anointing. So look at this. It said because there was a special fragrance around him. Then the Bible says in verse 18. Look at verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold. <laughs> I can preach a whole message. That's what they behold. behold. Somebody's about to behold you. <laughs> you see, when the word behold is used, they're about to make an outstanding statement. Something worth looking at. Something worth spending time on. Something worth giving attention to. So he said, Behold. What I'm about to say, Behold. Hear this. He said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. That is cunning in playing. A mighty, valiant man. I don't know how this man got to know him. I'm saying here to find out. When I get to heaven, I will ask him. Because when this guy was killing lion, we didn't hear about it, but this guy knew. He said, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person. But look at the last phrase. If you don't mind me asking you, if you can with the loudest voice that you can summon up, read that last phrase. One, two, go. And the Lord is with him. Amen. <laughs> you see that the word is is in the bracket. Yes, continue. that means it wasn't there in the original text. It was people who learned English and felt ah, for English to be right. Let's put is there. It actually reads, and the Lord with him. <laughs> Look at them, said, Lord with me. Lord with me. Who is the Lord with? Go to Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all of them that were oppressed of the devil. For God, God was what? With, with him. Hallelujah. You see, the anointing shows that God is with you. That's right. So by saying, and the Lord is with him, the man is saying, listen, all of this he can do, but there are some things that we can't explain. That's right. And the only way we can summarize it is this, the Lord is with him. There are certain things that you cannot achieve without yeah. God being with you. Yes. I don't care how cunningly you are to play. I don't care how mighty man of valiant you are. Goliath was mighty until he met David. Yeah. Ah, you are the next David I'm going to meet. Yeah. Listen. Everybody can shout. Everybody can be valiant until they meet the man who is anointed. That's right. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, sir. Simon the sorcerer was popular in Samaria in Acts chapter 8 until Philip showed up. The moment Philip showed up, he packed up. The moment Philip showed up, the ministry of Simon the sorcerer ended. The moment Philip showed up, every life Simon the sorcerer had been telling the people of Samaria ended. Hear me. You are the next anointed one that's about to show up on the scene. And I don't care who has been vengeant before, they are then we heard. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I love the anointing. <laughs> the Lord is with him. Number four, I'll give you one more, then I've got to close. Oh, Shandaliada, I have anointed, I have brought my holy here. This oil is not just a representation of the anointing. This oil, as it touches your head, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Things change for you. Amen. I've taught you here before. The moment that oil touched Saul's head, what he was searching for was given to him. What has been lost was found. Yes. Excuse me. Have you been searching for something? Yes. Listen to me. And the Bible said that good news was given to him in the, in the sepulchre. Mm. I told you, I said, a sepulchre is a place of crying, mm. tears, and pain. Mm. Where others are getting pain, you are getting good news. Amen. That's what the anointing does. He sank and searched for this particular missing donkey. He could not. But after he was anointed, they said it has been found. Mm. This year, you will find what you have been looking for. Yes. 
what you have been looking for will find you. Oh, shout out everything. Look at this. I'm going to finish this. I can't finish it all, but let's just tie it up somewhere. Number four, what's the next thing you see again when somebody is anointed? Here, he says in Psalm 45, verse 9, King's daughters were among thy honorable women because you have been anointed. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen. Now, the anointing, listen to me, number four, puts you in the company of greatness. That's right. <laughs> you, got, you, got to, you got to believe that. He puts you where? In the company of greatness. Because this man has been anointed, he said from today, you are no longer working with ordinary people. King's daughters. Do you know what my king's daughters? Royalty. Oh, Shandalayada. Someone say royalty. royalty. Now, the scripture tells us, sorry, theologians tells us that Jesus, hear me, this was talking about Jesus Christ, but hear me very well. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the manger. The poorest of the poorest. But when the anointing came on him, that changed. Now, centurion, generals in the army are looking for him. Pope and senior pope and extraordinary archbishops were what? Looking for him. Pharisees would travel very far to look for him. Wise men came from the east with silver and with gold, frankincense and man, looking for him. So, the moment the anointing comes on you, are you, are you with me here, somebody here? The moment you are anointed, you will realize that you will change company. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. You will change what? Company. company. You will come into the company of what? Of greatness. Woo. The anointing brought David to the palace. Mm. Ah, you missed that. Yes, sir. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Where are you going this year? The palace. The palace. Someone said the palace. The palace. the palace. the palace is a place where royalty dwells. He said you are going to have spices from the ivory palaces. The palace. He said that's where you are going. That's where I am going. That's where you are going. The place of what? Greatness. I know you look at what you have right now. And I know you are looking at yourself. And looking at your family. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> this pastor knows how to make us laugh. Oh. He's just like to encourage us, encourage us, encourage us. I'm not encouraging you. I am prophetically declaring to you that the hand that brought Joseph out of the prison and put him in the palace, not only just in the palace, but on the throne, is about to bring you out of your prison. You will now begin to drink with greatness, eat with greatness, die with greatness, walk with greatness, because greatness is coming upon you as a person. If you believe that, tap your chest and say, I receive the anointing. Yes, yes, yes. Someone say greatness. Greatness. I hear you say greatness. Greatness. That's what the anointing does. He brings you into the company of great people. Great people. When the anointing came, on Moses, on Aaron. Aaron has never been to the palace before. He's not talking with Pharaoh. God said, I will speak to you. Aaron will speak to Pharaoh. Mm. Oh, you missed that. Mm. Aaron has been anointed now. Now he's the one talking on behalf of who? Moses. He said, Moses, I can't talk because I'm, 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 I'm a samurai. God said, okay, no problem. I made the mouth, but you know what? To help you, you will take Aaron with you. You will say what I say to Aaron. Then Aaron will stand. An ordinary Aaron. Mm. We look at Pharaoh in the eye. I said, God's Say the Lord, let my people go, or else we will smite your camel, all your agricultural equipment, we will smite your atmosphere, and God will do according to what Aaron said, to the point that Pharaoh will always call Aaron bar. He's not dining with who? Dining with who? With greatness. That was what David had. He got to the palace. Now he will play, and demonic entity will leave a whole king. Then the king, you will do. By the anointing, you will carry solution for King's problem in this year. Yes. Other people were there. Are you hearing me? There is no king. Read your Bible very well. Time will not permit me. Or study history, rather. Study history. No king ever enters into a palace without having music around them. They have people who play music. But they cannot play it like the anointed one. That's right. Oh, Chandra Someone said they can't play like the anointed one. They can't play like the anointed one. One of my, one of my children, I said to me, someone may go, he said, sir. He said, my, he said, I have a little problem. I've been trying to get something done. 
and we have not been able to get it done. We have prayed, we have believed God, and all of that. So I said to the person, I said, listen to me. I said, when I come to your house, I will spend some few days in your house. After I've left, it shall be done. So I went there, spent some few days, and then I left. After I left, I feel about three weeks after, what they've been looking for for years. She called me and said, sir, after you, said, after you left, he said, that which we have been trusting God for. He said, it just happened. I just wanted you to know. I said, sir, but we have prayed. Other people have prayed. I said, it's a different one. Mm -hmm. When an anointed one comes, right. are you with me, somebody here? Yes, when an anointed person comes and sits on that bed, if you go there, something will happen to you. Oh, right. oh okay, you missed that. <laughs> Listen, Elisha was anointed. Is that not true? Yes. He received the mantle, double portion of the mantle of Elijah. Right. Don't joke with anointed prophet. You may make, don't make fun of pastors. I always tell people that yeah. please don't join these people online who are ignorant. Yeah. Who don't know what they are saying. Making fun of fathers of the faith. Yeah. Making fun of people who have lived their life in sacrifice yeah. just to help those of us coming behind to be able to stand. Yeah. And then you are looking down on them because they can't speak English like you can speak English or they didn't go to Cambridge like you went to Cambridge but hear me. There is something they have that you yeah. don't have. Yeah. So Elijah died. And when he died they buried him. Now the Bible says after they buried him, he heard it very well, that they were going to bury a man one day. And then the people of Israel saw some bandits coming their way. As a result, they couldn't get to the grave they've dug for this man. Ah, ah, May God cause situations. Are you hearing me? That will cause your blessing to meet you on your way to a place. They thought that, you see, there are some people who feel, ah, I have to work for Amazon for me to make it. Mm. I have to work for NHL for me to make it. No, there are certain things around you, along the way, that you have no idea, that God will use to make you. Amen. So the Bible said, to them, it was a mistake. To them, it was as if God left them. To them, it was an evil thing for them to be attacked. But to God, it was planned. Yes. Mm. Woo, Somebody said, divine plan. Divine we find expression, find expression in, my life. in my life against my own imagination. Hear this. Then the Bible said, to them it was evil. To them it was a disappointment. God is about to cause your disappointment to become your greatest appointment. Amen. Are you with me? Is there somebody say I receive that? Feel like telling somebody here if there's something that has happened and you feel disappointed, you feel let down. God is using it to redirect you, He's 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 using it to redirect you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That's why I don't cry over every disappointment because some disappointments are just a setup, He just got setting me up. So the Bible said, out of anxiety, out of fear rather, they took that man that was dead and just tossed him into the grave of Elisha. Hey, hey. <laughs> Miracles. No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> miracles to the time, Jesus, yes. But miracles lies in the grave. That's right. <laughs> there are some places you don't want to go, but miracles lie there. Hey. I know they are not very good places. Remember, it was in the, in the sepulchre that Saul got a good news. Uh -huh. They tossed him, and the Bible says, ah, that's one that shocked me. He said, when the man's body, no laying on of hands, mm -hmm. nobody did anything. But when the man's body touched the bones, no, the bones, someone say bones. The bones. So that means that Elijah has been dead for, dead for some time. Yeah. So his body has decayed. Yes. No flesh was there at all. Yes. So you mean that nothing is in the bone? Hey. No wonder the Bible says, Ezekiel, can these bones live again? <laughs> dry bones shall live again. Whatever is dry in your life, I speak today. I prophesy today. By the reason of the anointing, it shall come alive. It shall come alive. Dry bones shall come alive. In the name of Jesus. Believe the Lord your God, he shall, shall establish, believe his prophet, and you shall prosper. Mm. The Bible said the moment the man's body touched, mm. someone said touched, mm. the bones of Elisha. Mm. <laughs> you know, for you to come alive, your heart has to be beat. Your lungs have to function. I don't know what was in that bone, 
but I can assure you is the anointing. Because nobody received the anointing of Elijah after he left. He got the anointing of Elijah. Gehazi, Gehazi should have got his own anointing, but he did not. He messed up. Yeah. So the man died with his anointing. Yeah. But that anointing was still functioning in a dead body. Yeah. Hear me. I am saying to you today, there is a functioning anointing in this house. Yeah. Right now. Yes. And as the hands are laid on you and anointed, yeah. that anointing will cut whatever is dead to start working. Yeah. Somebody say working. Working. I didn't hear you say working. Working. Look at number say it's working. It's working. Listen to this. The moment his body touched the bones of Elijah, the heart started beating. Boom, 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 boom. Blood started pumping again. Boom, boom. The cells, the tissues, the ligaments, the muscles, and the tendons, everything began to rise up. They started working again. What was dead? The lungs started pumping, started moving. Are you with me, somebody here? The small intestine, the large intestine, the kidney, the liver, every part of this man's body responded to the anointing. A touch will come on you today. The Holy Ghost will touch you today. And everything that is dead will respond to the anointing. In the name of Jesus. My time is gone. Stand on your feet. I can't finish. Stand Hallelujah. on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. I want you to put your right hand on your chest. Whenever you are, close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are in the overflow, join us. Too. If you are online, join us. I want to lift up your other right hand, your other hand above your head. And repeat after me. Father, today, I repent of anything and everything that will not cost me to receive this anointing. Wash me clean with the blood of your son Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put out your hands. Open your eyes, look at me. I didn't have the time, but I will mention it. To maximize the anointing, there's only one thing you have to do. Amongst other things. Psalm 45, that we read verse 8. He said, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, the Lord thy God has anointed you. You need to devote yourself to a high degree of consecration and dedication. We are going to make a commitment that this year you will not joke with the things of God. That this year you are going to embrace God all the way. That this year you will not joke with the service of God. That this year you will not ever handle the things of God with levity. That this year you will be devoted to God. Then I will come and anoint you with this oil. So say after me. Say, Father. I make this commitment today in the name of Jesus that I will be devoted I will love righteousness and I will hate wickedness I will not go out of my way to do wicked things to people I will love righteousness I will love righteousness from this day forward in the name of Jesus Amen Put your right hand on your head. Close your eyes. Now I want you to just picture that oil flowing from the top of your head to the sole of your feet.
touches you. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest on you. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest on you. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. 